Chapter 4, Monday, August 26th, 1985. Jermaine DeMario is the first black boy I've seen at Hawkins High. He is a good-looking one, too. I'm not sure where that's, that comes from, but it just pops out of me. Maybe it's because I've always had a different idea of what good-looking means com compared with my friends, especially for someone who looks like me. Jay's the right kind of tall, probably up in the sixes. He has long legs, struggling to fit underneath the table between us now, so that he has to lean one arm over the back of the chair, giving him a cool, edgy look. And there's his hair. I never really understood all the fuss was about Steve Harrington's hair. I mean, sure, it's great and all, and it has to be since even buried under that goofy hat, it was still the reason more girls trooped into Scoops Ahoy than was normal. It's all Dustin's croaks on about. What he cons considers the definition of cool. But I guess I had to see Jermaine's hair to understand why Steve never quite did it for me in the same way. Jermaine's hair is an afro curl that goes over the front of his head and down the back, but not in a Lionel Richie type of way. More natural curls, less product. He shaves the sides down so that it looks like a mohawk, but instead of bald sides like the punks who hang out at the skate park have, his is just a buzz undercut that's overflowed by his curls. It's the, it's the coolest thing I've ever seen, and a few of the girls in the room agree freshmen and upperclassmen alike. They all cast side glances at him. And something even better, he wears a basketball jersey over a t-shirt. NBA All-Stars says, you play basketball? Is the first question I ask when I sit in front of him. He laughs at, at how forward it is. Lucas Sinclair, is it? He says, then extends a hand. Jermaine, but you can call me Jay. He shakes hands and his eyes twinkle. Straight shooter with questions, I see. Sorry, sorry, I say embarrassed. It's just, I haven't really seen black guys at Hawkins High. He smiles out of the corner of his mouth. 10 bucks says they paired us for that very reason. We laugh. There's an easiness to the way he speaks. His coolness has the opposite effect on me than the more popular kids usually does. Instead of pushing me away, it opens up the room, asks me to be free with him, to be myself. It strikes me now. This is how I want to be. This is how I want to be cool, like Jay. I wonder what it takes and if I have it. I, th I thought the same thing on my first day too, he's saying. Came in, a, came in as a transfer student halfway through freshman year. So it's a bit different from your experience right now. Didn't get no orientation, no peer mentor, nothing. So all I wanted to know, where did all the black boys hang out? He smiles. But you'll find out, like I did. That just because we aren't all gathered in one place doesn't mean we don't exist. I guess, I say. Crazy, though. What is? That you're a jock. I've only seen black players in the, in the NBA on TV, but never as jocks. The idea is surreal to me because I've simply never seen a jock who looked as exactly like me before. You are on the basketball team, right? I ask him. I am, he says, amused. Don't know if that makes me a jock, though. At least not in the way you mean it. Jason and the others, maybe not me. To me, if you're on the team, then you're a jock and a popular kid. It's how high school works. He laughs. If you say so, I guess you could technically say I'm on the team. Now, if only I could get off the bench and break in, into the starting lineup. Oh, I'm taking it back. That's surprising. You look like you would be a good, good player. What, because I'm black? His directness jars me. No, 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 no. I mean, I point to his jersey. I'm guessing not great players don't just wear all-star jerseys. Ha! He chuckles, don't sweat it. I was just messing with you. But you'd be surprised to know that back in, that back in Cleveland, where I'm from, 
People just wear these for fashion. He pinches his jersey. For real? Yes. And to your question, I'm a decent play player, if I do say so myself. Was in the JV front lines at my last school, but all the starting guard positions here at Hawkins High are locked in for the season. And coach is not going to make some rando sophomore starter. He shrugs. No biggie, though. I'm patient. I'll get, I'll get my time. He leans forward. But enough about me. If we don't talk about you, I don't get the extra credit for this session. We start where the orientation package suggests. Tips for navigating high school. Favorite subjects. Plans for the rest of the semester. I tell him about my guide to surviving freshman year. I like that, he says. Here's three you should add. He motions for me to take them down. One, avoid relationship drama. He pauses. Got a girlfriend? Yeah, kinda. What you mean, kinda? Like, yes, we're dating, but it's kinda weird right now. Some stuff happened over the summer. Well, that stuff better be unhappened real quick, because it'll consume your life if you let it. Same thing with any, um, any friendships you let run rogue. If you want to survive, really survive, you balance your classes and extracurriculars with any other part of your life. Else one monster, else one monster swallows the other. You know what I mean. Yeah. More than he knows, I scribble. We talk a bit about science stuff, and I tell him of my time with the AV club and the science fair. He nods along and doesn't mention nerd or freak once. Not even when I tell him about D and D, which he knows a bit about, though he's never played. What about you, I ask? What do you like? Just about anything that interests me, he says. Basketball, music, reading. I like to go wherever my heart goes. Except maybe Cleveland, Ohio, I say jokingly. Must, must have not have been great if you left it to come to this cursed nowhere place. A small cloud comes over him, then a slight shift in his temperament for the first time. Kind of similar to how Max's mood shifts when anyone so much as mentions Billy's name. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was a dumb thing to say. No, 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 no. It's okay. He smiles a smile. Tell me about this cursed town reputation. What's all this in the news about chemical spills? After registering how swiftly he's changed the subject, I tell him the media sanitized version of how the Hawkins Lab event about, yeah, uh, about the Hawkins Lab event and the tunnels led to our cursed Independence Day and the Star Court fire. Nothing about the truly cursed things that happened and how the media is not too far off in their speculation. As I speak, he leans back and listens intently, a frown on his brow. I hope I'm not scaring him. If despite everything that's happened, people like Jay and his family are still attracted to Hawkins, then maybe it's not as bad as it seems after all. This town, man, Jay says after. I knew this place was crazy when the fire happened, but whoa, looks like that was just the tip of the iceberg. We return to the orientation packages prompts and talk about extracurriculars. I explain my plan, plans to join the resident D&D club, which my friends and I heard is called Hellfire. He says, oh, he says, I thought you were interested in basketball, the way you talked about my jersey and everything. Oh, no, no, I'm no good at sports, I say. I don't even like, know, like, know the rules of basketball. I just thought it was cool to, like, you know, be talking to a jock and whatnot. He snickers. I don't consider myself a jock in the, in the traditional sense of the word. Well, you're cool like the rest of the team. You're on a first name basis with them, right? I'm sure if you hit that starting place you mentioned, you'll be just as popular, if not more. He shrugs. Well, what's hanging around the popular kids? Well, that's what's what hanging around the, the popular kids will get you, I guess. He tilts his head. If you end up thinking basketball is cool, though, maybe you should try out for the team. We'll have a table over in the gym with the other clubs when extracurricular signups begin. Come by then? I'm too shocked by the invitation to respond. Me? On the basketball team? Doing what exactly? 
No thanks, I say. It's the Hellfire Club for me. He shrugs again. Whatever you say, man. But if you're going by your own survival guide, get out of your comfort zone, try new things, make new friends. Then nothing st says you can't be both Hellfire guy and basketball guy. That's impossible, Jay. No one can be a nerd and a jock. Says who? Says... Everyone? He snorts, rising just as the bell for the next period goes off. Well, there you are, Lucas. Pro tip for high school. All the rules are made up, and the only rules that matter are the ones that you make for yourself. Just try not to get in your own way. He leaves me with directions to the next room on my schedule, but I barely register them. Try not to get in your own way has burned a mark into my mind. And for a long moment after he leaves, I hear it loop in my brain over and over until it becomes a, a wordless mush, like a tape caught in stereo. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed this reading, please smash that like button so this video gets picked up by the YouTube algorithm. Click on the link for chapter five. Thanks so much.